So what I've got on the bench here then is a Linksys antenna that was originally sold as a uh, combo package. It actually came with a uh, PCI card from uh, Linksys slash Cisco and it was the uh, WMP300N. Now I've actually only got the antenna itself. I picked this up at a uh, local flea market. I just paid £2 for this because uh, I kind of remember this from uh, back in the day. I think this came out about 2006 I believe 2007 and uh, they weren't very good on a uh, forum that I used to uh, post on quite uh, regularly uh, a lot of people would complain about this particular antenna now I've never actually seen inside one of these but uh, I do love the form factor it's actually three antennas and you've got three SMA connectors to connect to your card and uh, I, I just love so as a uh, somebody who teaches design and technology um, how it actually stands up the form of it and everything else but uh, obviously this is uh, a poor poor antenna I have already tried this with my uh, card on my editing computer and the signal that I'm picking up from that is extremely extremely poor so it'll be good to actually uh, take a look inside and see where they actually went wrong see if we can actually modify it and uh, keep this form factor and turn it into a much better antenna now to make it a little bit easier for me to test here on the bench I've got here a uh, USB adapter that takes a uh, internal laptop Wi-Fi card this is an Intel card and it's got the three uh, antenna outputs here and I've got these little short pigtails uh, attached to those so what I'll do I'll link it up with the uh, three uh, SMA cables here do a quick scan so I can actually show you how poor this actually uh, does perform so I'll just do a quick scan to show you how poor this antenna actually is and it doesn't pick up that many access points it uh, picks up between 9 and 10 and as you can see none of them are particularly strong signals none of them are that nice coloured green for instance and uh, this one here is uh, my access point and that's just below me here in the lab on the first floor of my house and I don't live in a particularly big house it's just a uh, three bedroom house so even that is below 50% so it's really really poor performance from this antenna and even now letting it settle down for a little bit most of the access points that it uh, first picked up are actually now dead so it really is a poor antenna but I've got a, uh, another little test that I can show you just to uh, see how poor this particular antenna actually is now as you saw in that uh, scan there of the Linksys antenna it performed really really badly and uh, I know that uh, the access points around me and I know how uh, here in my lab for instance a antenna like that should actually perform so as a uh, benchmark to test against I'm going to do a second scan now with three uh, little uh, rubber duck dipole antennas just uh, cheap ones off eBay they're around uh, 2.5 dBi in gain each one of these so they're only small so uh, we'll do a scan with the same Wi-Fi card and setup etc and see how well these actually perform so a quick little scan then with the three uh, dipole antennas and see how well they actually perform so straight away we've got 30 access points there maybe a couple more uh, not all those uh, access points are a really strong green signal but uh, they're definitely uh, you know stronger than the Linksys antenna was so you can see a nice comparison there between the two uh, antennas and to be perfectly honest with you as I said these little dipole antennas are what I expect to actually be in that Linksys antenna so I'm not quite sure why it's uh, underperforming like it is so to get into this antenna I can't see any screws whatsoever from the outside I don't think there's any screws under these little rubber feet here I think everything's just held together with uh, plastic clips so I'm just going to pry them apart and then uh, hopefully we can see what's actually happening inside this so I've got one of the enclosures off here as you can see and uh, it was just clips around the sides no screws or anything like that I did think that there maybe were clips down here originally but that's just a uh, pattern in the plastic there 
now we've obviously got this big weight here at the bottom as well which uh, also helps to keep it stable so it stays on its uh, three legs but uh, there's a bit of wasted space in here really I mean I don't think you actually need a weight as big as that so taking a closer look at this uh, antenna then it is actually a uh, dipole antenna it's uh, based off the uh, short bottom fed dipole antenna that is uh, probably the most commonest uh, type of antenna on the planet when it comes to uh, these type of frequencies basically uh, it's one of these antennas here where it's a quarter wavelength and a quarter wavelength and this is 25 millimeters 25 millimeters so it's slightly shorter than a uh, normal uh, antenna the wavelength at uh, 2.4 gigahertz for example is around uh, the 31 millimeter mark but uh, as I've pointed out in videos before the reason for this is because this particular design is called a uh, Hertzian dipole antenna it's a short bottom fed dipole antenna so if you want to find out why it is short and why it works still resonant at 2.4 gigahertz being so short then uh, you know just google that and uh, do a little bit of reading and uh, there's a good uh, wikipedia page that really explains it well as well so here then we've got the ground plane portion of this uh, little dipole antenna and uh, we've got this uh, unusual pattern coming off here it actually splits into two lobes coming back on itself and we've got these uh, traces here that do this uh, kind of square uh, wiggle here and that's actually an inductor so we've got an inductor here and an inductor here now a inductor makes the antenna inductive and when an antenna is inductive it's too long so that's why it's actually trimmed back slightly shorter the measurement along here is only 19 millimeters so these two inductors here actually allow that to be that short and still resonant at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and we've got these two lobes here which are probably acting as uh, a kind of uh, capacitor in a way and also adding uh, greater lobes here to the end so it will make it a slightly more broadband antenna so it'll work over the uh, frequencies in the the 2.4 gigahertz that wi-fi use for instance it'll work across that range no problem at all due to these two lobes here and we've got a similar theme on the back as well with the main driven element parts of this antenna we've got the feed line coming in here directly on the back of the ground plane there and it branches off into two we've got two inductors again and then we've got the two lobes at the end there so a uh, very simple antenna really it may look complicated at first uh, view with uh, the uh, patterns that's going on here but it really is just a simple uh, bottom fed hertzian dipole antenna so what is a bit of a mystery with this antenna then is why Cisco chose it to go in this particular enclosure as I said there's a lot of wasted space in here and I could have just gone with something uh, tried and tested like this you know you could have uh, actually uh, put one of these on the end of the uh, feeding coax here no problem at all there's more than enough space in here to actually do that but uh, whether this has been developed in house or not if it has then it possibly you know was never really tested in the real world I mean to test this Cisco would have to uh, actually take some time to uh, book some time at something like an anechoic chamber and get it tested properly so possibly they only ever tested it using simulations and then when they did a production run and they started getting complaints back etc maybe then they realized you know uh, that it is actually a poor performer but by then it's uh, too late or uh, you know as I say they could have possibly uh, purchased the rights to this just going off uh, the uh, data sheet that comes along with this design and again a bad decision on their part but um, you know the cost um, of uh, this antenna wouldn't be uh, much more expensive or less expensive than a uh, simple dipole antenna like this so I really don't understand why they chose this and again this particular antenna did not have a uh, long production run it didn't have a long life at all and a lot of people you know if you look on forums uh, way back when started complaining about these straight away at how poor they actually perform 
So I'm going to replace those antennas with uh, one of these very simple uh, proven and tested dipole antennas. Again etched on PCB so we can fit it in there quite nicely. And uh, I've got the uh, artwork here which I'll uh, provide a link in the description if you want to actually download this because you can use these with lots and lots of different projects. But uh, I want to go with this one because it will be the easiest to actually implement. Uh, I did think about actually using one of these longer range ones here but uh, I would have to uh, remove the uh, weights at the bottom here or even uh, cut away a great deal of that weight and just have a small section here to just uh, you know make it a little bit more stable when it's stood up but uh, I would also have to extend the uh, coaxial cable down a little bit more in order to feed that so it's just a little bit too short so I would have to modify it here as well so I'm just going to go with the uh, smaller dipole here but again you can uh, download this and uh, etch your own out it's just a good uh, you know uh, example of dipole antennas to actually keep for uh, other projects and to transfer these dipoles onto this antenna really really simple just desolder the old ones the coax is already cut back and shaped to actually solder onto something that's very similar so uh, tin up here at the bottom of the ground plane tin up here at the uh, start of the driven element and then uh, I can just solder the uh, original coax directly onto there and if you do come across one of these uh, really cheap these antennas and you want to copy what I've actually done here you don't have to remove the foam feet off these legs I remove the foam foot off the first leg but you actually don't have to you can leave it in place and just pry open the housing and then fit your dipole antenna inside so what I'm going to have to do is remove the other two pieces of foam off the other two legs and find something very similar because it's uh, it is a foam and not a rubber so it doesn't peel away nicely so it went together quite easily I just need to find something to replace those uh, little foam feet on the ends there so let's give it a uh, test then and see if we have actually improved things with this antenna so let's give it a quick scan then and see if we have actually improved things over the original So it's loaded up 25 access points but uh, it's not just about the access points just look at the uh, amount of green that's there really good signals we're getting compared to the original antennas and indeed now it's uh, almost 30 access points but look at the actual signal strength of those access points and I'll bring up the original scan so you can see it side by side definitely an improvement there and definitely improved more than 50% the uh, signal strength is a lot stronger across the board so we're a relatively simple modification to the antennas then we've increased the uh, performance of this by a factor of about three maybe even four uh, you can make your own mind up with the test results there but definitely a uh, significant improvement so we've now got a little uh, uh, trio of antennas that uh, work as they uh, should have done from the get-go and I do think to be quite honest knowing how uh, these kind of uh, manufacturing large manufacturing companies uh, operate that uh, the card itself that you got with this package was uh, a quite uh, a powerful card uh, people did have good things to say about that at the time uh, when they uh, got rid of this antenna and put three dipole antennas on there it did perform really well and uh, the form factor of this I really do like the form factor I think it look uh, really good as a uh, little nano router to convert it into a little nano router but uh, certainly all the money and development went into the card itself and the uh, form factor the case of this uh, little tri antenna here and definitely uh, an afterthought on the uh, uh, little PCB antennas there they just did not perform at all it'd be really interesting in the future if I uh, connect some up to some coax and uh, run a few test on tests on the network analyzer just to see if they are um, you know resonant frequency is at that 2.4 gigahertz because they just underperform so badly i'd be uh, surprised if it is 
but if you do see one of these for sale without the card going pretty cheap you know under a fiver i uh, would definitely pick it up with the view to uh, modify this because it is a pretty good try setup a nice little form factor to have on your uh, tabletop or just you know doesn't take a great deal of space up so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them and i will put a uh, link in the description to the uh, pdf artwork if you want to uh, etch some of those dipoles off for yourself so hopefully you did enjoy the video and hopefully you'll join me on the next one